Hello people, welcome. I welcome you all to this special webinar today uh, from Geeks for Geeks, where uh, Dhawal Patil, who is a data science engineer at Bloomberg and uh, who is also a YouTuber with a great reach, is here to discuss about uh, data science, how one should approach to data science as a career. And we'll be discussing all about that. We have a lot of questions here and this session is going to be very exciting for you all so just join in make sure that your friends are here to get an experience about uh, what is data science and uh, everything about it so we'll be waiting for a while for some more people to join in just give a thumbs up in the comment section so that i know that i'm audible and visible to you all and also you can drop in your queries, any questions that you have regarding data science that you want to ask the will. I'll be addressing that at the end of the webinar. Hello, hi Gauri, hi Jay. Hello Vikas. So there are quite a lot of people, people now. So we can start with the webinar. I'd like to invite the will. Hi the will. how are you today? Hi, Sheila. I'm doing awesome. How are you? I'm also doing awesome today. Uh, so how is it going there in the US? It's a little bit rainy. We had a plan for playing volleyball, but looks like it's not going to happen. We play volleyball like every Saturday. So, okay, it's so your be... plans are doing today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the weather is unpredictable here. So it just rains anytime. Anyway, we'll going, we are going to make this day a little productive for us and the <laughs> yeah. audience. If you're not playing Thank volleyball, you. we'll doing we'll be doing something. Yeah, good we'll be, yes. <laughs> well, first okay, of so, all, thanks for inviting because yeah. uh, GFG Gigs for Gigs, I remember uh, I used to use this a lot for interview preparation. So thanks for all the help you provided. Uh, to me personally, when I was preparing for software engineering interviews, you guys are awesome. So thanks for everything that you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dhawan. Okay, let's move on with the webinar. Uh, I'll be asking you the first question. First of all, let's uh, uh, like you can give your a brief introduction about yourself, uh, the company you are working in, and uh, your aspirations, your YouTube channel, everything. I'm a software engineer slash data engineer at a fintech company called Bloomberg uh, here in New York. I was working with NVIDIA before as a device driver programmer. So NVIDIA is into gaming and nowadays they're into deep learning and a few other things. I have total 17 years of experience in software industry. I've worked with multiple companies in India and in US. I've been in US for last more than 11 years now. And I started a YouTube channel called Code Basics four years back, where I started teaching Python, data science, and some of the other things that I have done personally in my professional career. I wanted to share it with people and people like my content and the channel is probably in a month it will hit half a million subscriber and i have been just thoroughly enjoying this experience with interacting with thousands of people right now we are interacting with so many amazing folks uh, asim arunav kumar sanjeev kunal Bush. people are asking questions here and i just love this interaction i love mentoring i have been interviewing for many years so i have a lot of experience in interviewing I have a lot of experience in mentoring people. Of course, teaching is my passion and data science is my passion. So I, I work as a software engineer, but I solve problems related to data. So, you know, in the industry, uh, all these fancy roles that you have, you will see people wearing multiple caps. So I can say partly I'm a data engineer, data scientist, as well as software engineer. So I kind of do mix of all the things and I like to read a lot of books. I like to kind of explore what's going on in the field of AI and ML. And I like to just share whatever I learn 
uh, on my YouTube channel. Okay, that is amazing. To share whatever you're learning, your knowledge, that is a really good thing. And also, there are a lot of technologies which are emerging day to day, every day right now. And it's important to keep a track of everything that is going on around the world. Yep. Learning never ends. I mean, the only thing yep. you need to have is a amazing learning spirit and curiosity. Otherwise, you know, it's kind of easy to get outdated in today's world where technology is just changing so fast. Right. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the questions. My first question to you today is what is data science? The big question. Yeah, great question. In fact, when you hear about all these jargons like right, data science, data munging, uh, deep learning, people get a little scared about these jargons, but these concepts are pretty simple actually. Data science is not new. We have been doing data science since ages. I think 10 years back, people were doing data science in Excel. Let's say you have an Excel file where you are maintaining all the numbers of your business and in Excel, you can plot pie chart, you can plot, let's say, revenue, trend chart, all of that. So that that is data science. That is a very primitive data science. So we were always doing data science. And data science is just a process of drawing insights from your data. So your data, your business is producing all these numbers. And now you use math, you use charting, you use all the techniques to draw some visualization, to maybe make a, a predictive model. And those insights help you make better decision. That is data science. So using your data, you are drawing some insights. Those insights help you make a decision uh, so that you can increase your sales. For example, you have restaurants. Let's say you have two restaurants, one in New York, one in San Francisco. Now you have monthly revenue numbers, expense numbers coming from all these restaurants, right? Let's say you are the owner of these two restaurants. Okay. One way of doing a simple data science is you have an Excel file. You look at all the revenue numbers. You try to figure out, okay, maybe in the month of summer, my New York restaurant's revenue is going, is going down. You can do that. But the problem with tabular data is that when there is a lot of data in, just imagine you have an Excel file with thousand columns and you know 50,000 lines. We humans are not good at consuming those many numbers, but we are good mm -hmm. at consuming a picture. So instead of those numbers, if someone plots you a nice chart, let's say a bar chart comparing New York and San Francisco's revenue, you can easily point, okay, in the summer month, my New York restaurant revenues are going down. So maybe I need to run a special promotion. So the bar chart that you used is basically a technique that you're using to draw the insights. And you started a promotion in New York is basically a business decision making. So you draw the insights, then you make a business decision. That is data science. Now, what happened in the last five years is the because of the digital transformation, social media, IoT devices, the amount of data that any business generates has gone up. And because of that, now Excel cannot handle data which is more than certain size. So then we started storing data into databases. We now have big data. We have Python and R, the programming languages which can do sophisticated data analysis. So data science then became uh, its own domain or a field so that now we are using advanced tools, frameworks, and advanced methodologies uh, to perform some of the analytics. And what it gave an additional boost is predictive modeling. So there is descriptive analysis. Descriptive analysis is okay. You're just doing analysis, whatever external example I gave you. But then there is predictive analysis. Predictive analysis is like, okay, next year in the month of summer, which restaurant is going to perform better so that I can deploy more staff. Now, machine right. learning models help you do that. So this is what data science is. It's it's a simple thing. Sometimes people get just, you know, scared with these uh, big terms, but yes. it's, it's really simple. 
okay uh, so that was data science for you for the people and it is not that much scary as it is described by the well it is fairly easy if you grab all the concepts yes so moving on uh, what are the prerequisites for data science i would say there is only one prerequisite which is lot of curiosity and learning spirit <clears throat> whatever material you need to learn data science is available for free on internet <clears throat> even if you don't pursue any expensive course you can become a data scientist the learning spirit and the curiosity lot of faith and hard work these are the prerequisites for data science now if you talk in technical terms math and statistics are essential concepts that you need in order or in order to become a good data scientist now data science as a field has multiple career roles so data scientist is the main career in data science industry there is data analyst as well there is data engineer there are various roles for data analyst you don't have to be that expert in math and statistics okay you need to know a little bit but you don't have to be super expert uh, for data engineering role you know need to be more of a software engineer than a mathematician or statistician so if there is a person who doesn't know math who doesn't know coding even they can learn data science it's doable because the amount of resources we have available today on internet they're humongous if you go to youtube and if you search for code basics data science roadmap or code basics data analyst roadmap you will find my two videos where if you want to do a data analyst career i have given a 3 month roadmap using free resources you know resources like gigs for gigs khan academy these are resources you can use to learn things step by step so i have given the entire curriculum okay week 1 do excel week 2 do python things like that and then i have given a 6 month data science roadmap which anyone can follow you don't need to have any background math stress and nothing you can learn those things step by step uh and you can become either a data analyst or a data scientist sometimes it process takes time because for example if you want to become data scientist you need to know math statistics python sql there are a lot of things you need to learn but you don't have to be expert right you you can learn all these things little bit and then start doing projects and as you do projects more and more projects you gain more and more skills so data scientists many people ask me that i need to have computer science degree that is totally a wrong assumption they also say in many jobs they ask for computer science de degree i understand in the job description you will see that but i have interviewed so many people on my channel people who have bcom background people who are mechanical engineers they have got a job as a data scientist or data analyst without any degree you know they learn things on their own and they did it so this is a great news that your past background doesn't matter that much you just need to have interest and passion for data and then you need to follow step by step approach and look you need to have patience things are not miraculously you you will not miraculously get a job in 6 months okay step by step take approach and learn the skills and follow the right guidance and anyone can build an amazing career in data science yes definitely and i would like to add that uh, there are a plethora of uh, new articles and uh, everything about data science if you want to truly get into data science you just need to pick one channel uh, like code basics i think his uh, courses are the best in data science right now as he deals in data science from day to day and also he is a data science engineer so i think that uh, his courses will be the most approved appropriate for you all to get into data science <laughs> so just pick a particular like uh, knowledge stream and get into it and you need to be consistent and uh, a little hard work and uh, you'll definitely be a data scientist yep i agree 
moving on i would like to address the difficulty level of data science like many people fear that uh, it is really difficult to get into data science to learn data science but uh, i'm sure that it is not that right well. yeah so as i said when i said data science you're talking about different roles so the main two roles are data analyst and data scientist data scientist is a little difficult compared to data analyst data analyst is not difficult anyone can become data analyst if you prepare with some discipline data scientist also once you have all the data analyst skill if you add few additional skills such as predictive modeling machine learning little bit more mathematics and statistics and little more programming skill you become data scientist so data analysis is like you're doing btech data data analysis is like doing btech and data scientist is like doing mtech it's just one step further correct and <clears throat> as i said <clears throat> i have interviewed many folks on my channel one person was bcom graduate he became data analyst and he's working at accenture so if you go to youtube and search for code basic space bcom to data analyst if you type that word you'll find my interview his name is hitesh we have covered his story then i know few mechanical engineers who learned data science skills on their own and they became data scientists. So there are people from various backgrounds. They, they come, they spend six months, one year in learning all these skills and they become data scientists. So it is not difficult. What you need to have is first you need to have passion. You need to have interest. Now, how do I find if I have interest in data science industry? Well, you need to try it out. No one, it's like you can't just sit and think, oh, do I have a passion for this? Even you don't know unless you try, right? I want to play volleyball. I, I don't know if I will like that until I play a volleyball game. So follow some online resources. Try out some Python code. Try out some mathematics, statistics, techniques. Try out some ML. I have an entire machine learning playlist, which I have designed for total beginners. I have pandas playlist, Python playlist, total beginners. You know, even high school student can learn it easily. So you follow all those resources and you try it out. It will not hurt, right? Try out for two months, three months and see you like that or not. You might be doing your nine to six job, fine. Spend four to five hours on weekend, try it out. You will know if this thing excites you or not. And then, uh, you can take further steps so to answer the question how difficult is data science it is not difficult anyone can do it it's just that you need to follow discipline and you, you need to do hard work now in the data science industry there are roles such as research data scientists for example so i recently interviewed one person and that video will be live probably next week that person uh he's a uh, he has a degree in physics, actually. Then he become a research data scientist. Research data scientist is something little more difficult. You, you are reading a lot of research papers. You are maybe writing customized algorithms. So those kind of roles are a little difficult. But if you look at general data analyst role, that's not that difficult. Data scientist is a little more difficult than data analyst, but again, from company to company, it varies. You know, if there are companies where the role, role might be more challenging, but there are other companies where you need to in, be involved in communication, understanding business needs, things like that. So if you don't have a computer science or math degree, and let's say you have done marketing for five years, don't think you are going to start your career from the scratch. Because all the experience you gain in your marketing field Maybe you might become a data scientist who solves problems in the marketing domain or business domain. You have general business understanding. So domain understanding is very, very important uh, for data scientists or data analysts. So it doesn't matter what your field is, you have gained that domain understanding, which you can carry on in this data science career. Okay, Dhawal, uh, for someone who is in, uh, like, who's in college, who wants to start uh data science what are what is your advice for them 
how to build a career in data science so if you are in college i would say focus on math and statistics like linear algebra and the statistics mm, you have descriptive statistics inferential statistics you know the basics of different type of distribution uh, z score outlier removal techniques <clears throat> so focus on fundamentals fundamentals are very important one mistakes that college kids make is they get lost in using fancy frameworks you know you want to use hugging face to solve an nlp problem you want to try gpt3 you want to use bird but these are like fancy concepts which are built around the basics the basics is math statistics and computer science these three things are basics and fourth thing is business understanding and communication i see very less folks spending time on soft skills soft skills are super important for data science career so take some courses on communication you know participate in events in your college that way you know you improve your communication you improve your team building skills these things are super important folks for data science career not many people realize this so soft skills is very important on top of that math statistics and uh, focusing on basic computer science skills i would highly suggest learning python programming language okay people i mean you learn c++ java that's okay you understand memory management some of the core principles that's fine but python is the programming language for the future so just focus on that practice more and more learn soft skills learn networking skills and if you do all of that by the time you are out of the college you will be so much in demand you know you will probably have five or 10 job offers with you yes and i think uh, data science is the uh, most demanding job right now in the everywhere yeah so harvard business review said that data scientist is a sexist job of 21st century and that is true but there is another role which is emerging too much which is data engineer and data engineer so what happened is all these companies because of the ai boom they set up data science department they started you know they started onboarding ai ml data science in their it department but then they realize that the quality of data in their organization is not that great or some of the data governance practices are not set up the data infrastructure is screwed up so now the new trend is many of these organizations are putting a lot of focus on data engineering so data engineering is improving your data infrastructure so just think about it you are in a pizza you are working you are running a pizza store you know pizza restaurant so there is a person who will bring all the ingredients like the bread the vegetables the cheese to make the pizza and the chef will actually make the pizza so that chef is the data scientist but the person who brings all this raw ingredients is data engineer so unless you don't have a proper raw ingredients your pizza is not going to come out good right if you have a very bad quality cheese or some a rotten tomatoes that you're putting on pizza your pizza is not going to be good so organizations are realizing that data infrastructure is not bad is not good so they are hiring now data engineers so data engineer uh, career is picking up a lot nowadays so if you have more interest in software engineering side of things then i would highly suggest uh, you focus on data engineering and data engineering means again you are in data data industry but you are you are a very good software engineer you know a lot about databases like no sql sql databases you know about big data ecosystem hbase spark you know messaging like the kafka things like that so yeah data engineering career is also picking up uh, really fast okay 
Uh, so let's go to the last question. And as we are approaching to the end of this session, I'd request you all to drop in your comments for any queries that you have, and uh, I'll be going to all of them soon. Let's talk about the future and scope of data science. So the future scope of data science is amazing. It's it's like, you know how software engineering field started in back in 1995. At that time, software engineering was new and the demand just kept on growing. And we are now 20 years, 25 years into that field and the demand of software engineer just keeps on going up. Similarly, data science in this uh, data science as like a proper job career started recently and this is just gonna go up and up and up because the amount of data that is being generated out of social media out of business transaction out of it applications that business are having out of um, iot devices that data is just going to go up and up it's and huge right now also it's it is humongous and the data driven decision making has proven to be very good for many businesses and people have already seen the benefits of it i still remember i live in new jersey here and there is a grocery store chain called patel brothers when they open a new store at any location they would use ibm watson and some of the advanced data analytics to study the demographics and income levels and you know various factors and based on that analysis they open a new store and i have consistently observed whenever they open a new store that store from day one will have long lines so they have mastered this art of analyzing okay which location is the best location to open a new patel brothers store so that you know there will be a huge line from day one and previously, these traditional business owner, grocery store owner, would just use their intuition. They would say, oh, here in Monroe or East Windsor, let's say, there are a lot of Indians. Therefore, I should open a store here. So if you do intuition-based decision making, it may not work. It's You're still get, uh, taking a chance. But if you do data-driven decision making, it can quickly turn into a business profit you know your revenue will just boost there is a direct roi and by investing on this infrastructure on data analytics patel brothers have they have grown so much they have multiplied their revenues by 10x so that's i have in my personal life i've seen a lot of examples where people use data analytics techniques and they see a clear result so and then see Patel Brothers, they see the success. Now, all the other competing grocery stores, they will also follow the same thing. They will be like, wow, this guy is so success successful. So now, you know, tier two, tier three or uh, businesses, everyone wants to use data science. So the, the future is very bright. Okay, okay. So uh, let's go to the queries of some of the people. As we have many questions, uh, let's try to keep it brief, the answers. Okay, that one. Sure. Sumit Singla is asking, what is better 10 years back in development or switching to data science? What is better? Can you repeat the question? 10 years back in development or switching? So you are Sumit, are you saying you did uh, backend development for 10 years and now you want to switch to data science? Well, if see, if you did backend development, uh, maybe you can think about becoming a data engineer because data engineers uh, get paid much more than data scientists in many organizations. Okay, some organizations might differ. So data engineering, as a career is very high paying compared to data scientist and also you're still in the data industry so you can say yes i am in a data science industry so i would suggest this 
if you spend 10 years doing something make sure you make a good use of that experience you know so data engineering is a career you should consider and data scientist is also of course a great career path it's just that you need to learn mathematics statistics you have to see how much you are interested in learning those things and if it is something that doesn't that you don't find much interesting then general traditional software engineering field also have a lot of career opportunities see what happens is many times people work let's say as a java engineer for so many years and they get just fed up you know they just want a change so that's fine we, we need to have a change we need to do uh, new things so try out data science learn those things on your own and but when you get hired as a data scientist in the in in uh, you know in your new job for example make sure you make a good use of that 10 years experience and and you want to be in a position where you kind of maintain your salary levels because you don't want to like your 10 years working as a backend developer you are earning x amount now you join some company as a junior data scientist and you take a salary cut you know i mean people do it but then you're taking a toll on yourself so make sure you maintain your salary levels at same and do a smooth transition so maybe now you take a backend developer job in some company which is heavy on data for example my company bloomberg is even if you become backend developer in bloomberg you're still dealing with a lot of humongous volume of data so then you're more near to data and you can easily become data engineer you know from that point so that you don't have to get a salary cut and you smoothly transition to data science okay next question is from hardik he's asking how to find internships in data science okay i get this question a lot uh, see hardik networking is very important people don't spend enough time on linkedin on linkedin go or build connections with data scientists let's say you are in bangalore search data scientist bangalore connect with those folks and when you connect there is a science in linkedin when you connect to people write a nice message sometimes people just send a connection request that's not going to work me personally if i see a nice written message saying something then i accept the connection request so learn those skills you know spend like leave python and everything aside spend take some courses on how to build how to improve communication and networking skill I read this book how to win friends and influence people you know people will spend so much time learning technology they will spend very less less time learning soft skills so how to win friends and influence people is a amazing book to improve communication and to improve your networking skills so read that book apply those skills and networking is the key uh, in finding internship i know many folks who found internship because they had amazing network uh, on linkedin and linkedin is also like a different science right you need to comment on people if someone is posting an article or something you know writing linkedin post just comment on them engage when you engage uh, you make relationship with folks and when that data scientist have internship in his or her company they will be happy to refer you okay hardik i uh, think you got the answer to that question okay internship question by the way it's a very generic question i, I just covered one part of it i mean i have some videos on on my channel so you can just go watch those videos i have made detailed videos on what are like 10 steps you need to take internship so go watch those videos but of all the steps i think networking is the most important step also guys if you want to connect with dawal uh, his linkedin profile is in the description below you can go there and also there is a link for uh, dawal's youtube channel you can check out all his playlists his free videos and uh, it is when in you, data science and everything yeah yeah folks when you connect with me on linkedin uh, make sure you follow me because i'm exhausting my linkedin connections already 
So if you send me direct connection request, I might not accept because I'm just full of connection and LinkedIn has some limit, right? Like 30,000 or something. So just follow me on LinkedIn. That way I post a lot of useful uh, material on my LinkedIn, including job opportunities, things like that. So if you follow me, you will get to know a lot uh, from me. Okay, Hardik Gupta is a full stack developer and how should he change from full stack to machine learning? So Hardik, in your current job, try to find opportunities where you can apply machine learning. Now your boss is probably not going to support, you know, your learning initiative because it's your own agenda. So in the extra time, you need to find some creative ways to apply ML in your day to day job, because that is the best way to kind of transition towards that step. And then you need to Kegel is an amazing platform. So practice on Kegel as much as you can participate in Kegel competitions, build some projects on your own. So if you go to YouTube and search for code basic space data science projects, I have given five projects end to end and out of those five projects, three projects are machine learning projects. And these are not like some academics, you know, like toy projects. These are like end to end projects where you build a website or mobile app, deploy machine learning model to Google cloud, Amazon, AWS server, things like that. So I have all those projects available with GitHub code with nice videos and the way I have explained it is very easy. Even 10th grade student can understand it easily. You know, no jargon, nothing, no bullshit. So follow those projects and try to customize those projects in a unique way. For example, I have this project of potato disease classification. So I literally built a mobile application, which you can take in a farm and give it to a farmer. Farmer can take a picture of potato plant and they, it will tell you if the plant has a disease or not. Now you can take the same project and instead of potato disease classification, make like a tomato disease classification or maybe brain MRI, you know, like take a bunch of MRI images and make a mobile application that can detect if the brain has a tumor or not. Or go to a nearby doctor or a hospital if you have someone in, in your relationship, try to get access to some data and tell them that, look, hey, doctor, I can help you build this classification model using machine learning. So that way you're working on a real project. It's not just a toy project. So work on a few projects on your own and learn those skills on the side. And then parallelly in your current job, try to apply ML. Sometimes jobs and your schedule is such that you don't get much time. So then join an organization, which is little, you know, like some organization, let's say if there is a company who is just doing website development and then do, they don't do anything else, then it becomes hard to find ML opportunities. But there are other companies where, for example, Bloomberg. Bloomberg is a company, we have software engineering teams, but we have ML teams as well. So if I am working in Bloomberg, even though I'm working as a software engineer, I have an access to ML team. I can go talk to those teams and say, hey, you guys are doing ML engineering. Can I help you? I want to learn it. Can I help you for free? I will help you in my free time on weekends. So you need to put all those sincere effort. This is not going to come to you for free. You have to put a lot of dedicated effort without expecting anything in return. The only thing you're expecting in return is your own learning. And if you do that, it's not hard to become machine learning engineer. You can do it. Definitely. It will take six months, one year, two year, but just be persistent. And once you become machine learning engineer, you're opening a hell lot of new opportunities for yourself. Machine learning engineers get paid very high. If you go to this levels.fii website, it has salary levels. So for example, machine learning engineers here in US 
if you are working in Google or Facebook or big a Amazon, they get paid more than half a million dollar a year. If you are in India, 80 lakh, one crore, more than one crore people have that kind of salary if you are a machine learning engineer. So ML becoming ML engineer and being good at ML is going to bring so many opportunities for you, you know, and, and financial reward is just too good. Okay, uh, let's address this last question, which is from Abhijit. He's uh, a 2018 pass out VTEC in electrical engineering he is currently not employed and is 24 plus years old so any advice for him sure so is data science course going to help you job in the get a job in it industry see it industry is very big by the way abhijit it industry has many careers you can become simple web or mobile app developer for example, React Native, there is a huge demand of React Native developers right now in IT industry. And React Native developers are hard to get and they get paid really hard, um, high. So you don't have to really come to data science industry. Data science is one option you have, but you can become either a mobile app developer, web developer, you can write down, write down all these terms, you know, because just yesterday I was providing some career guidance to a friend of mine and I told him he wants to join IT industry and I gave him uh, different options such as web developer, mo mobile app developer, data analyst, business analyst, Salesforce admin. Salesforce admin is a job in IT which doesn't require much coding. It's more configuration, a little bit scripting. You can become Salesforce developer. You can become Scrum master. So note down all these career roles and do Google search and try to find out. Some jobs require less coding. They are more on project planning, communication. Then there are some other jobs which requires more coding. So for example, Salesforce admin, business analyst, these Scrum masters, they don't require much coding. It's more communication, soft skills. But if you become mobile app developer, web developer, Python engineer, they require a lot of coding. Then there are jobs such as data analyst. They require some coding, some tools, and some communication. It's kind of mixed. So you have to look at your personality, your interest level, and pick a right career. For you, I would give few suggestions, which is one is data analyst role or just becoming a web developer or even a graphics editor. You know, you can learn video editing, graphics editing. So try all these different things and see where where is your interest and where you can make a faster progress and pick that career. There are 10 or 15 different career tracks that you can choose from. You don't have to really go come to data science, but yes, data science is one of the options. Now, when you say taking course, you can take some boot camp, like six month boot camp being run by many. There are many universities. For example, IIT Madras is running some data science course. Uh, their fees are high, I understand, but then you are dedicatedly working on, uh, you know, that curriculum. And when you spend a lot of money, of course, you will be committed as well so yeah Bijit, you can definitely get a job it's not hard you just need to be very confident improve your soft skills and just not waste your time in self-doubt you know just start doing it and as you do it you will get your own answer in, in terms of which career is the best for you so i wish you all the best abhijit all the best from uh, my side as well abhijit and uh, you will definitely get a job soon if you stick to the course that you're taking up. So, Dawel, let's end this session. That uh, This has been amazing and uh, it was pretty informative for the people. And I hope that people will take all your advice and implement it for their career. 
Yep. Thank you very much for inviting me here. Gigs for Gigs. You guys are doing amazing job. So everyone just Gigs for Gigs. You probably all know about that website. It's very popular. So just follow their article, whatever material they're putting out. It's amazing. And I want to thank you again uh, for inviting me here. Yeah. Thank you once again, Dhawal. And uh, all the best for all your future endeavors. Yep. Bye bye. And sorry if I couldn't answer all the questions. I know there are many questions. Uh, I run a regular live sessions on my channels too. So if you have any of the questions, uh, please make sure you come to my channel, you're subscribed. And uh, I regularly run this Q&A session myself. And then I, I invite industry uh, experts as well. So I invite sometimes, you know, data science heads, data scientists, which are working for big companies. And we both, we, we kind of come, we do this joint session we, where we answer people's questions. So make sure you attend those if uh, you didn't get a proper answer to your question today. Yep. Okay. Right. So bye 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 Dhawal. Also uh, bye uh, people. I'll be back with uh, other webinars. We do webinars every day, every Monday, Tuesdays, and also rest of the week. There are some special webinars like the winter series, which is coming up. So do check that out on our events page and also on the YouTube. So uh, thank you guys. Uh, I'll be back again and uh, stay home and stay safe. Bye bye.